Hello and welcome to another Planet Destiny exotic weapon review. Today we will be revisiting the first curse hand cannon since Bungie decided to buff it about a week after my last review. Did their changes make it worth reusing? Well let's see. The intrinsic perk Deadeye still gives a bonus to range, stability, and movement speed when aiming down sights. If there were changes done here, they aren't apparent. You still get a noticeable stability increase when aiming down sights, but the movement speed and range are difficult or impossible to notice. The perk still confuses me. I know Bungie's trying to make it into this marksman's type hand cannon weapon, but if the stability is the only thing that's noticeable, why not just increase the base stability a bit and give it third eye or a noticeable movement increase when aiming down sights? Anyway, the muzzle perks are still CQB ballistics, greatly reduced recoil, significant penalty to range, smooth ballistics, increased recoil, boost to range, and soft ballistics, less recoil, penalty to impact. Again, I still go with smooth ballistics here. The stability increase from Deadeye means you really can just focus on the range increasing perks. This gun wants to hit things that are far away, so just up that range stat to let it. The stability increases on the other muzzles are nice sometimes, but I just found myself loving the fact that I could extend this gun's range out a little bit more with smooth ballistics. The next perk, Triple Tap, will return one round to the magazine when you rapidly land precision hits. I still love this perk on this gun because it makes it really viable for PvE. In PvP, it'll be pretty rare for you to actually trigger this since the hits needs to come at a pretty steady pace. If all hits are crits, then you'll end up having 11 rounds total in the magazine. For the stat mod perks, you actually have a choice now, even though none of them really changed. You can choose between quick draw, drawing the weapon faster, lightweight, giving you plus two agility when holding the weapon, and finally speed reload, which will help you reload quicker. I used to say only go for speed reload, but the changes to the first curse perk made it so reloading isn't as huge of an issue in PvP. For PvE, I still suggest you go with speed reload though, since it'll help you a small bit. It isn't a night and day difference between the reloads as you can see, but it is enough so that you can get a bit of breathing room when you need a clutch reload. For PvP, I absolutely recommend that you go with quick draw, since a lot of the times you're going to be swapping to this gun from your secondary and you really need that extra little bit of time to shoot someone. The final perk is the first curse, and it causes the first precision kill of the magazine to refill it, and then grants bonuses to movement speed while aiming down sights, range, and stability until you reload. One of the chief problems that I listed with the version 1 of the first curse was that its reload was horrible. Well, the major change to this perk pretty much negates that complaint. Landing a precision kill will now refill the magazine completely, but only on the first precision kill. So as long as you're killing something that takes more than one precision shot, then you'll be able to take full advantage of the first curse stat bonus perk. If you take advantage of triple tap and the first Kirk procs on the very last bullet in the mag, then you'll have a total of 22 rounds in your magazine, assuming you keep hitting crits for the remainder of the magazine. That is an impressive amount of potential damage for a primary weapon. As far as the increased movement speed, it's completely unnoticeable from Deadeye. Look at this comparison. With and without the perk active are pretty much exactly the same time, even measured down to the frames. I've also seen a lot of people in the community talking about how this perk will apply to the other weapons that you have equipped. I decided to go out and test this, and the results don't really show it. I tested this with a sniper, sidearm, and my machine gun, and none of these weapons appeared to have an increase in their stability. This leads me to believe that the perk does indeed only work on the first curse and only stays active on your buff bar to denote this. Alright, moving into the PvE section, this gun has gone from almost usable to easily the best choice of its hand cannon archetype at least. You used to have a really tough time in PvE due to the horrible reload speed, and you never got to use the first curse perk a lot because you'd just be out of ammo. Now that you can gain all of your ammo back on the first precision kill, you'll have a much longer time between reloads and much more time taking advantage of that increase to range and stability. The only thing that's really disappointing is that oftentimes you start off fights by just doming a drag in the head and then you have a fully reloaded magazine. You kind of have to learn to go after majors first with this gun so you can empty the magazine some and then refill it by getting a headshot kill. The area that this hand cannon really excels though is range. You're just pretty much able to switch from scout rifles to this gun and not have any huge issues with adjusting to the range. You'll still have some accuracy problems, but once you get the first curse perk active, you'll have a lot better time hitting those precision shots from across an arena. The sad thing is though that even though this is really the best PvE hand cannon out there right now in terms of raw damage output and range, it just falls short of being something I can actually recommend you using in a serious manner. 
A lot of times, things are just too chaotic to get continual triple tap procs going on, or even land a precision shot. If you go up against a bunch of Vex Minotaurs, then this gun is pretty much useless since it really relies on you getting those precision hits. If you can't, then it feels like you're just firing limp noodles at your target. Also, even though the ammo return buff to the first curse perk helps, you'll still find yourself reloading often due to the nature of the gun. Can you use it in PvE? Sure, but only when you're messing around. Moving on to PvP, it's kinda in the same boat as PvE. It's in a really good place, but due to its archetype as a slow firing hand cannon, it will just never perform well enough to be in the absolute best tier of weapons. Right now, you're really only going to feel it perform well against targets that have low armor since it will still two-shot them. Otherwise, you're going to have to land three shots against targets, which is the same as the faster firing hand cannons for the most part. This gun is pretty deadly for team firing though, since one headshot will pretty much take someone's shield off, so if you can get one shot in while a teammate gets off a sniper shot or a few pulse rifle bursts, then you will take down a target easily. The first curse perk is amazing now though, since most targets will take three shots to down, you can land a precision shot for your last shot, and then have a full magazine and buff to make taking down more people easier. In rare circumstances, it's downright overpowered, like in this one. Zone B secure. Two for one. You're in the lead. Triple down. Fantastic work. But for the other 99% of the time in the Crucible, this gun will just end up letting you down. The slower rate of fire just makes landing that kill a bit more difficult. Now, if you want to use this gun as something to switch to, then you might be in a little bit better boat. The quick draw perk does allow you to swap to it and immediately put out some massive damage. So in a similar vein to how the last word is good with a sniper rifle, this one might be good with something in the lines of a fusion rifle, or maybe even a sidearm. As it stands right now, you'll be able to use the first curse successfully, but even if you use it to its fullest potential, other guns like the last word, red death, or Mida will absolutely outperform it. So in conclusion, the first curse still isn't quite there yet, but not because of the perks or anything really related to the weapon. All of those issues have been fixed in my eyes. It's in a very balanced place right now, but due to it being in that slow firing hand cannon archetype, I don't think we'll ever see it become a must have weapon. If you were holding off on doing the bounty because it used to be a horrible weapon, then you can now complete that bounty knowing you won't have a stinker on your hands. As a side note, even Imprecation got a buff to its range, so the quest isn't as painful as it once was. I hope you guys found this re-review helpful. Maybe some of you have decided to dust off the gun and try it out again. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.